you gonna do? What I do best. Welcome to Ms. Mojo. And today, we're counting down our picks for the top 10 Wednesday season one moments. Genießen Sie Ihr authentisches Pilgrimfudge aus Kakao Bohnen, bezogen von den unterdrückte und Bohnen des Amazonas. Alle einen nehmen dazu, dass er armselige Schüsschen für bereit amerikanische Geschichte auf Fress durchhalten. For this list, we'll be looking at the creepiest, kookiest, and spookiest scenes in Netflix's altogether ooky Adams Family spinoff. If you're not caught up with season one, beware, spoilers ahead. What's your favorite Wednesday moment? Let us know in the comments. Number 10. Winner draws first blood. For the final point, I would like to invoke a military challenge. No masks, no tips. Winner draws first blood. Wednesday Adams is the new kid at Nevermore Academy, and what better way to introduce yourself than going head to head with the school's queen bee, Bianca Barclay? When Wednesday marches into fencing practice, she makes a beeline for Bianca and challenges her to a duel. Interesting thing about bees pull out their stingers and they drop dead. Wednesday comes from a family of top-tier fencers, Adam's patriarch Gomez in particular, and in this series, Morticia captained the fencing team in her Nevermore days. So naturally, their daughter would be packing some serious skills. Point to Wednesday. Wednesday and Bianca each score a point before the masks come off. Let's see if you bleed in black and white. Wednesday may not come out the victor, but she made it known that there's a fighter beneath that gloomy glare. Number 9. Wednesday's First Kiss You're making a mistake. Probably. Definitely. Adam's Family fans will remember when Wednesday kissed Joel Glicker at Camp Chippewa in 1993's Adam's Family Values. But in Wednesday, the teenager's first kiss is a lot more intense. Wednesday finds herself in a love triangle with fellow Nevermore student Xavier Thorpe and his Jericho rival Tyler Galpin. As she's not one for expressing emotion, both guys feel like they're getting mixed signals. But after Xavier's arrest, she stops by the weather vane to see Tyler, picking up where they left off during their oddly romantic fairy light date in Crackstone's crypt. We're closed. Then you should lock your doors. There's some real sick people out there. It's not just any kiss, though. She has a vision and realizes Tyler is the hide. Only Wednesday, Adams would have her first kiss with a literal monster. Of course, the first boy I kiss would turn out to be a psychotic, serial killing monster. I guess I have a type. Number 8 Goody Heals Wednesday. Crackstone must be stabbed through his black heart. It's the only way he will be vanquished now and forever. Is your spectral vision impaired? I'm dying. In Wednesday, Jenna Ortega pulls double duty playing the titular teen as well as her ancestor, Goody Adams, one of the original outcasts and victims of the outcast hating Jericho founder Joseph Crackstone. But she's also the one to put him in an early grave. Little does Wednesday know that she will meet the same fate when Miss Thornhill resurrects Crackstone using her Adam's blood to unlock his sarcophagus. Things look bleak until the spirit of Goody appears to lend Wednesday a helping hand. Made possible thanks to the talisman gifted to her by Morticia, the Adams have always been a close family willing to die and kill for each other. This scene proves that their familial bond goes beyond the grave. Oral said you were dead. I'm feeling much better now. You're like a cockroach. Please, flattery will get you nowhere. Calling pop culture superfans everywhere. Do you love to argue with WatchMojo's top 10 ranks? Introducing WatchMojo's first and very own party game. Bring your superpowers to the table and fight for your pick to be at the top of the list. It's all the fun of the comment section, but in real life. Number 7. Winning the Poe Cup I just asked myself, WWWD, what would Wednesday do? Wednesday Adams is not known for being a team player, so we were just as thrilled as Enid when she joined the Black Cats for the Poe Cup race. Of course, her main motivation was vengeful sabotage, but we like to think she also wanted to help out her roomie. I want to humiliate Bianca so badly that the bitter taste of defeat burns in her throat. 
Yeah, but mostly you're doing it because we're friends, right? Decked out in a catsuit reminiscent of Catwoman from Tim Burton's Batman Returns, Wednesday is determined to beat Bianca at her own game. For the record, I don't believe I'm better than everyone else. Just that I'm better than you. I want to welcome you all to the Edgar Allan Poe Cup. With the help of Thing, she takes out Bianca's siren helper underwater, sinks the gold bug's canoe, and co-leads the Black Cats to a historical victory, much to Enid's delight. Admit it, you kind of got to the whole school spirit thing. You didn't tell me it was a dark, vengeful spirit. Number 6. Piranha Payback Yo, Dalton, look! Pixley's sister! The first time we see Wednesday Adams in the series, she walks the halls of Nancy Reagan High School. She finds her brother Pugsley stuffed inside a locker, and we get the feeling this isn't the first time he's been terrorized at school. I want names. I don't know who they were. Honest. It happened so fast. Pugsley, emotion equals weakness. When she gets a vision of Pugsley's tormentors, Wednesday calmly goes to exact her revenge. She strolls into the school's swimming pool area with bags of piranhas, dropping them into the pool and watches the water polo team scramble in fear. The only person who gets to torture my brother is me. One of the swimmers even loses a body part in the process. You know the old saying, never bring a knife to a sword fight, unless it's concealed. The point is you assaulted a boy and showed no remorse for your actions. That's why you're here. He lost a testicle. I did the world a favor. People like Dalton shouldn't be allowed to procreate. The scene is pretty gruesome, but Wednesday's twisted way of protecting her brother is undeniably entertaining. Number 5. A Fiery Solo <laughs> One of Wednesday Addams' top skills is the cello, and in the first episode, we get to hear her play a hauntingly beautiful rendition of the Rolling Stones' Paint It Black. But episode 3 has her in front of an audience delivering an even more epic solo. When the Nevermore students gather among the normies for Outreach Day, she's forced to play Don't Stop by Fleetwood Mac with the Jericho School Band. But soon after Principal Weems and the mayor unveiled the new statue of Jericho founder Joseph Crackstone, there's an explosion. And when it goes up in flames, Wednesday switches to a more fitting piece for the chaos, Italian composer Antonio Vivaldi's Winter. It's dark, intense, and very Wednesday Adams. <laughs> Number 4. Wednesday Defeats Crackstone You know, we have roots that go all the way back to Joseph Crackstone. So you come from a line of psychotic killers too? Joseph Crackstone was a visionary. After being kidnapped by Thornhill, aka Laurel Gates, stabbed by Crackstone, and then healed by her ghostly ancestor, Wednesday Adams is ready to take on the murderous Pilgrim before he fulfills his mission of eliminating all outcasts. Howdy, Pilgrim. <laughs> Thy heart still beats. What demon sorcery is this? Stay away from her! Wednesday takes an arrow for Xavier, which is only fair since he saved her from getting crushed by a gargoyle, but the arrow doesn't really phase her and she's still in fight mode. With an assist from Bianca, Wednesday stabs Crackstone in his black heart. Even before she survived near mortal wounds and risked her life to save her fellow outcasts, we knew Wednesday Adams was a total badass. But this heroic takedown shows just how powerful she is with a little help from her friends. I owe you a thank you. We're getting that Benson title next year, so don't let killing one supernatural pilgrim get to your head. Number 3. Tyler's Monstrous Reveal Ironic would have been framing Xavier for murder while the real hide helped me put him away. Wait. You don't think- I don't think. 
I know. Wednesday puts a plan in motion to prove Tyler is the Hyde, which he denies, of course. She's prepared to get a confession through extreme interrogation methods, but is stopped by Sheriff Galpin before things get too violent. Let's test your reflexes. I'm in here! Get away from my oh. son! Drop it! Drop it! At the police station, Tyler reveals to Wednesday that she was right, but that she's already lost. Ask a question. What does it feel like? What does what feel like? To lose. He tells her about the horrible things he's done to innocent people and how much he enjoyed the carnage. And it was delicious. You have no idea what's coming. Whether or not you suspected the friendly barista all along, this is a chilling scene that shows a sinister side of Tyler we haven't seen before. Number 2. Enid Saves Wednesday Antisocial Wednesday Adams doesn't have a lot of friends, or, well, any friends. That is, until she goes to Nevermore Academy, where she meets her bubbly werewolf roommate Enid Sinclair. Welcome to Ophelia Hall. Not a hugger. Got it. Though they are polar opposites, the two form a bond as Wednesday slowly breaks down her emotional boundaries. Will you forget about me? Enid. The mark you have left on me is indelible. Anytime I grow nauseous at the sight of a rainbow, I hear a pop song that makes my ears bleed. I'll think of you. And when Wednesday's in trouble, it's her loving Rumi who comes to her rescue. After wolfing out for the first time, Enid attacks the hide, giving Wednesday the chance to flee. When Wednesday and Enid reunite, they finally share a deeply emotional hug, making for a beautiful moment between unlikely friends. Before we unveil our top pick, here are a few honorable mentions. Wednesday vs. The Pilgrims. From quippy sucker punches to a full-on beatdown. <laughs> Snap twice. A quick callback to the classic Adams Family theme. The answer will give a sharp cracking sound. Rejecting the Nightshade Society, Wednesday Adams doesn't have the time or respect for amateurs. I'm not interested in joining. You're seriously turning us down? Can you believe it? Untie her. I freed myself five minutes ago. Hummers stick together. Wednesday becomes protective of her beekeeping friend, Eugene. Nobody's ever stood up for me before. You said Hummers stick together. I know this might come as a shock, but I don't have any friends. You remind me of my brother. He the desire to strangle him every waking moment. Thing lives. Wednesday tearfully watches as Uncle Fester revives the disembodied appendage. It will be slow long and excruciatingly painful. Number one, Wednesday slays at the Raven Dance. When the sun goes down and the moon comes up. Without a doubt, the most watched, loved, and talked about scene in Wednesday is when our gothic anti-heroine steals the show at Nevermore Academy's Raven Dance. Wearing a gorgeous black tulle gown, Wednesday breaks out her unexpectedly hypnotizing moves to Goo Goo Muck by the cramps. What's more impressive is that actress Jenna Ortega choreographed the dance herself. Incorporating moves inspired by punk dancing of the late 70s, early 80s, rocker Susie Sue, 
and of course, Lisa Loring's Wednesday Shuffle from the 60s. It's already sparked a dance craze on the internet, inspiring thousands to reenact the routine themselves. I choreographed that myself, and I think it's very obvious that I'm not a dancer or <laughs> No, it's amazing. The dance perfectly reflects the icon that is Wednesday Adams, who still manages to stand out in a school full of weirdos. Do you agree with our picks? Check out this other recent clip from Ms. Mojo. And be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos.